Hey guys, how's it going? So we're back with another video and today we're going to do something that we've surprisingly never done before on this channel. We're going to build a parts caster, but not just any parts caster. I want to build a fender using all fender parts. So to start with, we've got this body. It's beautiful. It's a violet. You can see VLT violet body, fender Mexican body. And it's not just any body. It's a hardtail body. I have always wanted a hardtail strat. And the cheapest hardtail strat you can buy right now, that's a fender, is about $850 used. Um, all the parts that we're going to talk about today came in at less than half of that. We got us a tusk nut and some fender vintage tuners. You can't. There you go. You can see the Fs on them. A fender F neck plate, some cloth wiring to finish up the wiring job, and some soft touch knobs. I've heard good things about these, but I've never experienced them for myself. So we'll see how those are. I got a really special set of pickups here that I'm really excited about. These are the Ultra Hot Noiseless. I actually found a pre-wired pick guard on Reverb for cheaper than it would cost to buy these pickups new. If I flip it over, you can see Ultra Strat Modern on the back with red. You got full-size pots and a normal five-way switch. We'll get to the neck in a little bit, but first I want to wire everything up. Unfortunately, I have to take the bridge off because I have to ground the guitar to the bridge. And the way these work is you'll see there's a hole right there. And the wire goes in that hole and comes up here and grounds to the bridge. To take the bridge off, you really just need to remove these three saddles here. Because then you can push this aside and get to that screw, that screw, and that screw. With the bridge removed, you can see right there is a little hole, and that's where you're going to put your wire. I got this cloth wire, not so much for aesthetics, but so it would be easier to push down through this hole. See how easy that is? If this were like a rubber wire, it'd be a lot harder. And there it is. Okay? So, what some people do, and this is how I'm going to do this, is I'm actually going to pull this all the way into the output jack cavity. You can actually ground this to the output jack, and that's what I'm going to do. So let me just pull this through a little more so that I have some more space to work with. Okay, so the way this works is part of this is just going to be laying kind of flat right here with metal exposed, and then the pressure of screwing the bridge down onto it is going to be enough contact. The other end of it right here is going to attach to the output jack. All right, I got the jack soldered and installed. Um, I do it upside down like this on purpose. I like having like a right angle kind of jack here. Anyway, um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually just cut this. Once you've got it cut, you want to kind of push it in a little so that it lays flat, kind of like this. So that when we push the bridge plate back on, it's actually going to just push down and apply enough pressure to have this metal piece contact the bridge. Before putting the saddles back on, now would be a good time to test, make sure everything works. Okay. Okay. Cool, everything works. All right, we got the bridge back on. All that's left to do is screw in the pit guard and put the knobs on. Pit guard and knobs are in. These knobs are really cool. So these are regular knobs, but on the side, they've got like this nice grippy rubber material. It feels wonderful. I love it. I don't have a tip that will fit on here. This is wider than the one I have right here. So I don't know if that's American spec or uh, Squire spec here, but yeah. So yeah, there we go. We just need to put the neck on now. All right, I hate to do this, but here we are in the garage. Why? Well, look at this. So this pick guard, these pickups are super, super deep. So it's basically a stacked humbucker. That's what a noiseless single coil really is from Fender. So it's not a single coil, it's a stacked humbucker. And because of that, it's really thick. Like so thick that when I lay this pit guard on here, look at this, the towels are in the way because I prepped it for routing, but it won't, look at this. See this? It won't fit. So what we're gonna have to do is this beautiful violet limited edition hardtail body if we want to use these pickups, we have to route out a little bit of the cavity. So, as you know on this channel, we like to do things with what we have. 
Well, I will tell you this. If you need to round out a pickup cavity, you're gonna have to buy something if you don't already have it. One of these, this is a wood router. So I am going to go ahead and plug it in. It's plugged in. Now the game, name of the game here is slow and deliberate. Slow and deliberate. So the way this works is you pull this, there's a button on the left, right side. You can't really see it. Let me move this a little bit so that you can see. There's a little button right here. And when you push it, it disengages the lock. And then when you press the other button, it spins. So this is manual. So over here on the left side, there's a little adjustment thing. And this thing allows you to set your, how deep do you want it to be allowed to go? So for now, I'm gonna just put it on one and I'm very slowly without pressing the button to engage the spinny, I'm gonna press the lock and pull it down and see, is that enough? No, we need more. In fact, I'm gonna just back it out all the way and just see how deep, if we can get deep enough with it just like this. I think we probably can, but I don't know. And it looks like, yeah, we will, we will get close. So let me back it down about like that. Let's try it, wish me luck. I'm doing it on a really slow speed. It ain't pretty, but there you go. You can see I took quite a bit out of it and that should do it. Didn't take very long. So you can put it back together now. Check it out, man. I got it all done. And if you look, it is flat as a pancake. I am so relieved. And you can't tell I did anything. Check it out. Um, yeah, look how much wood there was. Ugh. Okay, so as a backup plan, I had this. I believe this is from the StarCaster. These are, I believe, really low output, underwound single coils, which have a really good vintage sound. And look, they've got stacked pull pieces sort of staggered pull pieces i should say um i was gonna put these in there if i couldn't get those noiseless to fit but they fit so now you're not gonna wait but i'm gonna wait three days for the neck to arrive the neck came what do we have a black label fender stratocaster mn4 so this came up on ebay and i had to have it for this build i'm so excited as we know from our Black Label video, these are great necks. And I wanted to get a lefty neck because I wanted to have the reverse headstock. Since I'm building this myself, I want it to be to my specifications. And honestly, if I had to pick a fender neck to put on this thing, it would be a Black Label neck. So the things we need to do, we need to put the tuners on and we need to install the nut. So let's go ahead and start with the tuners. Obviously, the first thing we need to do is take the old ones off. So... I guess it doesn't matter what order you do these things in, but you do need to unscrew all 12 of these screws. Once you've got the screws out, these should just pop right out. Check it out. So when comparing these two tuners, we have a little bit of a problem. So here's the one on the left. This is the original one. And the one on the right is the F tuner. But you can see it has this thick base part here that isn't on this. So when you try to fit it, it doesn't quite fit. So we're gonna need to drill out that hole. Before we do that, we do need to get these little ferrules out. What I'm finding that's working the best is to take a small Allen wrench like this and then a tiny little hammer. See, do that to all of them. Once you've got them all out, then you can drill. Got my drill here. And I'm just going to hold it steady. See if that's enough. I got to run and buy a drill bit because I don't have the right size drill bit. As you can see, I drilled it, but this still doesn't quite fit. So I'm going to run and get that. But while we're waiting, 
I'm gonna go ahead and install this nut and let it dry while we're gone. So what I'm gonna do is grab some of my Gorilla wood glue here. I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of it on this nut. I'm gonna press it down in the nut slot right here and apply a bunch of pressure until it stays put. So as you can see, I did get it drilled um, and it does fit now. If I grab the tuner and then push it down and there you go. So I wanted to mention here, these holes here on older fenders are gonna be eight millimeters. But if you buy like this, this is like the modern reissue of the 70s tuners, it's 10 millimeters. Look at the difference between the two holes. So I'm committed now because once you drill this, there's no going back. But thankfully, I can confirm it does fit. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other five. Before we do that, I do want to show you. So this ferrule goes up on the top right here. You just kind of set it where it goes and then you push it down. I might hammer it down just a little bit. I've got this little mallet over here. Got it all done. Those Fs look pretty cool, man. All right. Now it's time to put the neck on the guitar. This is the very end of the process here. I'm so excited. So it fits in the neck pocket perfectly just from holding it. I got my Fender neck plate here and my neck bolts or neck screws. So I'm just gonna start with this one out here and I'm just gonna screw it down in. I'm gonna take care to not force it and make sure that it finds the hole in the neck. I'm not gonna force it through. I'm gonna just make sure it should be lined up correctly as it is, but I'm just going to not apply a ton of extra pressure and it's in. Now, it's barely in. I mean, I've just got barely any tension on that screw. But, all right, let's do this one next. And I've got barely tension on the screw because I wanna make sure that all the holes line up before I start tightening it too much. So if I meet any resistance, it means the hole is not in the right place, but no resistance, that means we're good. All right, let's do this one next. Okay, one more. Okay, once that's in there, I'm gonna go around to each screw and tighten it slightly. I don't wanna tighten it too much because I could crack the paint. We don't wanna do that. Okay, let's flip it around, see what it looks like. Gotta say, it looks wonderful. Oh yeah, let's string it up. All right, so here it is. Um, it's all strung up and ready to go plugged into my deluxe, custom deluxe reverb amp. This is a Fender, it's a reissue. Um, and then on the floor I've got a uh, Super Fuzz by Behringer. I have a British JCM style pedal by Tom's Line. And I've got an analog delay by, I can never remember, Lot Key, Lut Key. So we're gonna go ahead and just see how this thing sounds. How do these pickups sound? How does this guitar sound? How does it feel? How does it look? I think it looks good. Let's go.
like a strat to me. Let's turn off this delay. And let's just go straight into the amp. No effects at all. sound awesome. Now, I may have mentioned this before, but the way these pickups work is they're basically humbuckers, but they're stacked. So instead of having the coils side by side, this has the coils stacked on top of each other, and that's kind of how it achieves the noiseless status. Um, so they're not really single coils, and I really wish Fender was more upfront about that to people who may not know. These aren't really single coils. They're basically single coil sized humbuckers. But they sound very close to a set of single coils. Let's go ahead now and throw on that delay again. And let's throw on some overdrive. This is going to be the British pedal by Tom's Line. <laughs> like it matches my style of music but doesn't really sound like a single coil um let's throw it up to the neck though and see if maybe we can get some more single coily sounds out of it that way <laughs> Let's see what this fuzz pedal 
metal can do with this guitar. I'm gonna roll, I'm gonna just leave everything up all the way. good as my other one, uh, my other black label. It's a great feeling neck, um, it's fast, it feels really good in the hand, and it just, it feels comfortable to play. As far as like how the hardtail feels, you can really feel the strings resonating in the body. I don't know if you're, if that actually does anything to the sound, like coming through the amp, but you can kind of feel it as you're playing it. It also just feels more solid. I mean, the tuning stability is amazing. I mean, I've been, I haven't tuned it once. In fact, I didn't tune it before I started filming this. This guitar was here for like a while before I picked it up and, tune, and uh, played. Let's see if it's still in tune. It stays in tune perfectly. The soft touch knobs feel great to move. They, they're awesome. The switch is good. I really have no complaints. I think the color's eye-catching. It's very different. It's not something that you see every day. And I think it sounds really good. One thing that I do want to do real quick is, yes, I have my black label right behind me. I want to play something on this and then switch to that and see if we hear a difference. So we're going to start on the neck. much louder it's not even close why because these noiseless pickups are like 18k or some ridiculous reading like that why are the single coils in my black label which are stock pickups I mean the rest of the guitar I modified but why are the stock why this is weird <laughs> stock single coils first and then we'll switch over to the hard tip with the noiseless hot <laughs> Same 
thing. The single coils were way louder, like twice as loud as the noiseless. And I'm not gonna edit the audio. Um, this mic right here is the mic that's catching all this. And I'm not gonna edit any of this volume. It's, it, you're just gonna hear straight volume comparison, no adjustments at all. Um, it's crazy. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that these noiseless hot, you kind of lose some balls with them. Now, if you're playing like heavy music, it's perfect for that because it's basically a small humbug. But if you're playing stratty kind of stuff, you are going to lose something. You're going to lose some of that. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that that sparkle or that ice picky stuff we were getting with the other guitar is a great thing. But wouldn't you rather have more treble that you can take away than need more treble and not be able to get it? And that's kind of the situation you're in. If you want a classic strat, just a classic strat sound, don't get these pickups. Just get normal strat pickups, even like Squire strat pickups, because those are usually overwound ceramic magnets, and those are really good. I like them for what they are. But as far as this build, I'm happy with it. I'm going to leave it exactly the way it is. I like this guitar a whole lot. Um, it's probably going to end up being a main guitar for me. I mean, I always wanted a hardtail, and now I've got one. And I really hope that you enjoy going on this journey with me building this thing. And uh, I think I'm going to keep it forever. So, yeah. Thanks very much for watching. I appreciate all of you. Please like and subscribe. Please join the Discord if you haven't already. Uh, the link is in the description below. We talk about guitar, gear, etc. So, thanks again. I appreciate all of you. See you next time, and keep on rocking.